Is that anybody's story today? God keeps on blessing you. And is this familiar to anybody? I mean, it doesn't just keep on, but over and 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 over, and over again, God keeps blessing. There's someone who can just shout thank you today for all that God has done and all that God is doing. Is there someone here not ashamed to turn to someone and share some of the blessings God has poured over your life? Just turn to someone and share some of the multitude of blessings that God has poured upon your life. Would you share with someone? Because your encouraging will remind them of what God is able to do. Is anybody here who is a witness? He keeps on. How many of y'all know that makes you feel better? It makes you feel better to burst open with gratitude on this morning. Thank you. Mm. Can't nobody. That's a double negative, but that's all right. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Two others, both criminals, were taken along with him for execution. When they got to the place called Skull Hill, they crucified him. Along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. And Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what it is that they are doing. Dividing up his clothes, they threw dice. Y'all ain't never done that. They threw dice for them. And the people stood there staring at Jesus. And the ringleaders made faces taunting. He saved others. Let's see if he can save himself. The Messiah of God, the chosen, for real? The soldiers also came up and poked fun at him, making a game. They toasted him with sour wine, what we would call vinegar. So you're the king of the Jews, huh? Save yourself. Printed over him was a sign, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging alongside cursed him. Some Messiah you are. Save yourself. Save us. But the other one made him shut up. Have you no fear of God? You're getting the same as him. We deserve this, but not him. He did nothing. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And Jesus said, don't worry, I will. Today, today you will be with me in paradise. Let us pray. Lord, help me to preach and give us listening ears to your spirit, to your word, your will, and way. Amen. I want to ask this question this morning by way of a topic. What kind of king is this? This is Christ the King Sunday and the lectionary, which is the three-year cycle of readings. How many years? 
the three-year cycle of readings. Dr. Bowling, there is year A, there is year B, there is year C. In this year, on the final Sunday of the liturgical year, because for Christians, the new year begins the first Sunday in Advent. This is the last Sunday of our liturgical year, Christ the King Sunday. On the last Sunday of the liturgical year, the church is called to reflect upon the power and reigning presence of Jesus. And so the question is, why for the last Sunday in the year do the lectionary writers, thinkers, philosophizers plunge us back into the story of crucifixion? We were supposed to have been done with that through Lent and the season of resurrection, but here we are faced again with this story of painful, problematic, evil execution of the one whom God sent. And all of this is so that we might wrestle with the question today and always, if Jesus is indeed the king, if Jesus is indeed the one reigning, what kind of king is he? There is someone here who has not allowed your faith journey to destroy your intellectual journey, which means that you believe in God, but you have not turned the lights off in your head. You have sat on the front pew with deceased loved ones in front of you, and you have asked, what kind of king is this I'm serving? You have had bills and tuition and student loans to pile up, while you've tried to be faithful and you've had to ask yourself, what kind of king is this that I am serving? You have been in hospital rooms and in doctor's offices. You've been given diagnoses that are challenging. And you have had to ask yourself, what kind of king do I serve? You've had childhood trauma, teenage trauma, middle age trauma, old age trauma. And you've asked yourself, what kind of king is this? Well, I wish that there was something in the news that could help me to, to make sense out of this. You know, nothing really is happening in the news. There's really, there's really not anything going on at all. I mean, you know, there's nothing in the newspapers. There's nothing on television. Really, there's nothing going on in the world. Do you all agree with me? There's really nothing nothing important going on in the world. Well, this is interesting. There is a lot going on, and at the height of every news program, they are asking questions about power. The reason that we are locked in this congressional thing that we have witnessed the past few months and televised the past couple of weeks, it is a question of power. What is the proper use of power? At what point has the one with power abused power? At what point has the one given power and authority sought to use it in a way that it was never designed to be used? And lest we just park our angst at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, we all have power in our own way. We all have power over ourselves. We have power over the people in our circles of influence, those whom we know. And the question always is, how will we wield our power over our spouses, over our partners, over ourselves, over our children, over our employees? And as indignant as we are about the current occupant of the White House, every one of us, to a certain extent, has been a little shady with the use of power. Somebody had the key to the church copy and came down here making copies you ain't had no business making. Somebody borrowed some staples and some paper clips. Somebody went to the job and said the government got plenty of money. They won't miss this tea, this coffee, <laughs> these pens. This computer, I think I'm talking to you this morning. Some of us have been on official travel, business 
travel, made some detours, and had dear old Uncle Sam pick up the tab. All of us are plunged in this vortex of how do we deal with the power that we have. The story is of none effect if we think that only those in high places can abuse power. Everybody has the potential. And most of us have in some way dealt with power in ways that could bring shame if shared publicly. The question is, when we plunge into Luke's narrative, he begins assigning titles to people. Be careful of people who assign titles, who say those people over there are like that. These people who live in this neighborhood think like this, or eat like this, or dance like this, or vote like this. Be very careful because there are always exceptions to the stereotypical rules we live by. I was talking with a scholar recently about Booker T. Washington, and you know that people talk about Booker T. as an accommodationist. Some talk about Booker T. as a sellout when they juxtapose him to Du Bois' more strident nationalism, more strident determination that we ought study the classics, at least some of us, and prepare for uplifting the race from those precincts of learning. Well, what I didn't know about Booker T. Washington is that there was a black man who had killed a white man for raping his wife, and Booker T. Washington allowed that man sanctuary in his home. And so when the police came knocking on the door asking Mr. Washington had he seen that man, Mr. Washington said, I ain't seen him. Risking himself because there is more to the story than we know. These criminals, as Luke calls them, I've got a problem with him calling these men criminals because we don't know what they did. I've got a problem with him calling them criminals because he is assuming because they are certain people, assuming because they have been crucified that they must have done something wrong. How many of you know that just because you get arrested and go before a court doesn't mean you've done anything? It might mean that you look the way the profile says you should look. It might mean that you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. You might have done nothing wrong. These men are called criminals because Luke says that they are criminals. It's the way that I feel when I wander into certain stores in Georgetown or Tyson's or certain neighborhoods where they think that people that look like me ought not travel. Be very careful about who assigns what value to what people and what is behind that assumption. What is clear to me is that Jesus, the one we call king, is now in the same place as these two other quote-unquote criminals. Now, does that mean that Jesus likewise is criminal? Yes. To Rome, he is criminal because he is not lifting up the banner of empire. He's lifting up the banner of God. He's not lifting up the banner of raw military power, but he's lifting up the banner of God's salvation of all persons. He is a crime as far as a criminal, rather, as far as the country is concerned. But as far as God is concerned, he's doing the work that he was called to do. So all of them find themselves having a similar fate. Throughout the text is woven the question that I asked at the top. What kind of king is Jesus? What kind of king finds himself in the place of criminals? And notice as the contours of the text are opened up to us, they keep asking Jesus, if you are a king, how did you wind up down here with us? If you are the king, how come you can't change your fate, change your circumstance? If you are the king, we have heard how you healed, how you blessed. Can't you save yourself when your reputation is that you have saved others? What kind of king winds up in the same mess as the subjects? I'm going to tell you the kind of king that winds up in the same mess as the subjects, the kind of king that I need 
and the kind of king that you need. I need a king who does not abandon me when I am broken. I need a king who does not abandon me when I am grieving. I need a king who does not abandon me when my back is up against the wall. I need a king who will not leave me alone when I am at the bottom of the bottom. This is a king who is with those who are suffering most. Is anyone here today who has felt the presence of God with you when you were suffering the most, when the pain was the most acute, when the challenge was the most significant? He does not abandon, but he stays. Now notice the difference, brothers and sisters, between their vision of kingship and Jesus' his vision. Essentially, their vision is a vision of self-dealing. When you are king, you use the monarchical power, you use the scepter and the throne to save your own high. When you are the king, when you are in trouble, you use your authority to make a phone call to say, do me a favor. When you are king, you use your authority to get people to stay in your place of business. When you are king, you do whatever you can to self-deal and to make yourself stronger, richer, greater. When you are king, you let others take the rap and you remain free. But can I tell you about the king that we have? We don't have a self dealing king. We have a king who is concerned with the salvation of everybody. With his power, he doesn't let you take the rap, but he stays with you. With his power, he provides for you. With his power, he opens doors for you. He's not just interested in taking care of himself. He's interested in taking care of all of us. Here is the difference between the way the world uses power, the way that earthly queens and kings, emperors and empresses use their power. They use it to build bigger kingdoms. They use it to build bigger houses. They use it to take advantage of more people, of more land, of more opportunity to build wealth. But this is a king who says, what I do, I do for us. What I do, I do in behalf and on the interest of all that God has made. This is not a God, a king known for self-dealing but one who is known for salvation of all. And then there's something else I see here. What they keep asking is really a very relevant question because these two quote-unquote criminals are asking uh, one of them taunting Jesus and saying, look here, man, if you had any kind of real authority, not only would you bust out, but you would bust us out too. I mean, if you had any real authority, you wouldn't have been here in the first place. But since we're here at the same time, and I believe you got something, you got a little something, something, why don't you use it to get out, and when you get out, bring us along with you? Yeah, that, that's, that's what he's saying. Look here, man, I know you got some juice. Use that juice to do something for you, and once you use it to do something for you, call back and say, hey, y'all, come on and join us. But, but there's someone else, this other perceived criminal, who says, no, no, I, I, I think better. I know better. I believe in who you are. And I tell you what, I want you to remember me when you go where it is that you're going. This is someone who clearly can see that Caesar's kind of leadership is not divine, that the kind of leadership we see in our nation right now is not of God. That's not what real ruling and real reigning looks like. When you use power like they use power, you're using it because you are afraid. You're using it to lord over other people so that you can protect yourself from the ultimate reality that you are a naked emperor. And I've got to use violence to keep you from taking my clothes off. This other one says, 
I know you're going somewhere. And when you go, don't leave me behind. Listen to this kind of of leadership. We have kings and queens today that would never talk to someone of this estate. You know how you blow up in this world, you give a million dollar donation. You know how you blow up in this world, you vote for the right one. You host the right party at your home raising money. You do all those things. That's how you have access. That's the kind of leadership we have in this world. But what Jesus is showing, what is possible, is that those of low estate can cry out to the one who is in charge, and that one will listen. And so here we have the juxtaposition of emoluments versus mercy. Emoluments is what I can make from you. Mercy is what I can give to you. Emoluments is how I can make my name greater. Mercy is how I can be with you and open doors for you in the midst of your tragedy and your difficulty. Is anyone here today who knows that our king is not made strong by what our king can get, but our king made, is made strong by what our king gives to us? Is there one person today who knows about his mercy? Is there one person today who knows about what he'll do for you when nobody else can do it? Is there one one person here today who knows that he will step in and step up and give you what no other power can give you. And so today I'm glad that we have the kind of reigning king who says to the one in need today, not tomorrow, but today you will be with me in paradise. Doesn't matter what they said. Doesn't matter that they called you a criminal. Doesn't matter that they locked you out. When I get to where I'm going, you will be there with me. And there's someone here today, when the Lord went to the land of peace, the Lord brought you along with him. When the Lord went to the land of healing, the Lord brought you along with him. When the Lord went to the land of grace, the Lord brought you along with him. When the Lord went to the land of forgiveness, the Lord brought you along with him. Is there anybody here today who knows that the Lord will bring you to the place that he promised? What kind of king do we worship? We worship the kind of king who was not elected because we would not have voted for him. We worship the kind of king who cannot be impeached because legislatures have no authority over him. We worship the kind of king who can serve more than two terms because he is the ancient of days, the king of kings and the lord of lords. We worship a king who will reign forever and ever and ever and ever. We worship the kind of king who woke us up early this morning and started us on our way. We worship the kind of king who was with our mothers and our fathers, our grandmothers and our grandfathers. We worship the kind of king who is strong and mighty and merciful. Is there anybody here today thankful for our king? Thankful for his mercy. Thankful for his grace. Thankful for his power. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm thankful for the king. Everybody on your feet. What kind of king is this? This is the kind of king I need. Who won't forget me when I'm on a cross. The kind of king I need. Who won't leave me alone. The kind of king I need is the one when everybody else calls me a criminal, he said, no, that's Bill and I can do something with him kind of king when everybody else has written me off he said no I got something I can do with him that's the kind of king we have is anyone here standing because you know this king has been in your corner you know and he's the king of kings and lord of lords not 
because of what he has taken, but because of what he has given. The doors of the church are open. I need someone here to know no matter what your past, no matter what they say about you, you may be on your cross. If you turn toward him, he'll say, today I'll take you to where I am. I will renew. I will restore. How ought we to use power? We ought to use it to lift. Use it to love. You know, I've been paying attention to what's going on in the news, although there's not much going on, but, you know, it's interesting. Witness after witness has stood to tell the truth, and what the people in power have done is denigrate them. What they have done is to say all manner of evil against them. What they have done is allow them to be chewed up by false media narratives. I'm so glad that when we stand and tell the truth, we have a king who will stand with us. A king who will not abandon us, <clears throat> no matter the circumstance. And so today I invite you on this Christ the King Sunday to come and unite with us as a church. I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your family of faith. I want to share with you this life the king invites us to. Today you will be with me in an abundant paradise of forgiveness, of love, of grace, of joy. In the midst of crucifixion, the promise is made. You will be with me. I will not leave you behind. As the choir sings, would you come this morning? We're waiting on you.